Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, I want to break down the opening scenes for two of the greatest horror movies of all time. I'm talking about Halloween 1978 and Scream 1996. What I want to do is uh, watch these opening scenes together, give my analysis on it, and then come up with an answer on which of these openings is the most effective. And I won't cop out. I promise I will give you guys an answer. So let's get right to it. All right, we are going to start with Halloween. We are going to watch it together. I'm going to pause it at certain points uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, so I can give my commentary on it. And number two, so YouTube allows me to post this video because sometimes they're bitches. But without further ado, let's get right into it. And before I hit play here, do me a favor. Tell me down in the comments which of these opening scenes you like better, which one you think is more effective, all that jazz. I love to hear your guys' comments on stuff like this, uh, so be sure you join me down below in the comments, as I said. Let's get right to it. We'll start with Halloween, the one that started it all. Let's do this. Obviously, I got uh, the tail end of the iconic theme there. Right off the bat, in Halloween night, 1963. So right away here, you know, we're starting with the POV, you know, this this infamous POV shot of the killer that uh, was made popular uh, pretty much in Bob Clark's Black Christmas uh, a number of years earlier. Uh, but Carpenter uses it to excellent effect here in the opening of this film. Let's continue. Like I said, I'm probably going to fast forward through some parts, but um, just so we're not here watching the whole thing for... An hour, but right off the bat, I'm, I, I, right off the bat, you know, slowly panning into the house, you hear the crickets, you hear something howling at the moon. Uh, that's good stuff. It's right away. It's just kind of building atmosphere, uh, which this movie obviously is, you know, just draped in atmosphere. Right to the door, we see two people making out. Obviously, that is going to be Judith Myers and the 15 second man. Remember, at this point, we do not know whose point of view this is. Love the pumpkin there. That's great effect. You know, great uh, Halloween seasonal atmosphere right there. And we can hear what Judith and her boyfriend are talking about. I'm just going around the house. This, I think it was a steady cam, right? Michael's around someplace. Like a little line that you think is a throwaway line. Michael's around someplace. Okay. We don't, obviously don't know who Michael is. We don't know he's a six-year-old child, but uh, it's obviously an important line there. We're going to fast forward through a little bit as they go upstairs for some sexual time, you know, for a few seconds. And then we get another pan around to the front. The window, the light turns. I'm going to kind of fast forward through this a little bit, so... We're not analyzing every second here, but we'll start playing a second here. Look at now, you know, look at the the stinger kicks in as we're going around to the back of the house, taking its time. The study camp's great. Lights off, it's great. And here we get, just get a hand grabbing a knife. That is good stuff right there. Once again, you know, we have no idea who this is. So hand grabbing the knife, going around to the house, uh, you know, just draping the film in atmosphere again. And, and this music is just great for, you know, setting, you know, setting the tone of how we're supposed to feel as an audience, you know, just, just genius stuff that we really hadn't seen before this, uh, you know, very unique uh, approach to filmmaking Carp Carpenter had at the time, at least. I love this part. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I love it. I love how he looks back. I, I love how he looks back. But look, he, he doesn't see the person whose point of view we, we are, uh, are are in there. So, so that, that that's good shit right there, you know, uh, that 
this person's leaving and now we know that this young girl is alone in the house with somebody that has a knife. Very effective. And we get the slow here and then we're about to get to the really uh, iconic moment of the mask being picked up. I love how you can hear the uh, hear the clock going off. Look, we got a hand reaching for a mask, and then look at that. That's so good. You know that the the mask is essentially over the camera. Once again, we are in the point of view of what's about to be the killer. Near her. Fast forward a little bit here. We see her, and then we get that. Boom. The music is just extremely effective. I love, how, I love how he's looking at his own hand as he's stabbing her. It's funny. Look, you just see her corpse blood. That's good shit. And then obviously the music changes right after that, which is really um, a reflection of how we as an audience, uh, my opinion only, but uh, how we as an audience, our our tone, the way we're feeling during this scene has changed now. Okay? It's telling us how to feel without telling us how to feel, which is what great filmmakers do. We obviously get walking down the stairs, a car pulls up, and two people get out. And boom, it is a six-year-old boy holding the knife. And look at his face, like he doesn't even know what he did. Um, and then obviously we get, you know, like a cinematic tableau type ending where it freezes like a play. Fucking brilliant opening scene there. Just, like I said, sets the tone, sets the mood for the entire film. A lot of that was music, a lot of that was the steady cam, and obviously the lighting. So really, really good stuff there for Halloween. Um, we're going to analyze Scream here in a second, but man, that just sets up the tone of this movie, the tone of the entire franchise, mostly specific to this movie, uh, because after this movie, the franchise kind of went off the deep end. Uh, I love Halloween too, but, you know, you, you know, for this movie, uh, extremely effective uh, what we got there, and especially in 1978. Uh, so no qualms at all with Halloween's opening. You know, both of these movies and openings are, are some of the best that's ever been done. So this is, you know, uh, you know, like choosing between your two favorite kids or something like that. But Let's, let's get into the other one. Now, this is a really long clip. It's like 12 minutes. I am going to kind of do the same thing I did with Halloween there. I am going to be fast forwarding through many parts, um, but there's certain spots where I, I really want to hit because uh, much like Halloween's opening, uh, in a little bit of a maybe a subtler way where we don't realize it's happening, but much like Halloween's opening, this one slowly ramps up, you know, as it progresses. So let's get right into it. Enough talking. Yeah. Right away, Roger Jackson's voice, which we obviously, uh, which obviously is synonymous now with Ghostface, but uh, we don't know that yet because all we got was a phone call and we got uh, what we thought was our heroine in this movie, Drew Barrymore, answering the phone. Okay. Right away, I love the way the camera, you know, the phone rings again and the camera slowly zooms in on her. Like, what the hell? Um, and obviously it's going to get a little more intense as we go here. Hello? I'm sorry, I guess I dialed the wrong number. So why did I dial A little flirtatious shit here. Um, I, what, I, what I like is it, it's building up that the phone is becoming a threat already. Uh, which obviously, you know, if, knowing what we know about Scream now, obviously we know the phone ringing is a threat. Here, you know, all it took was two phone calls there. And because of Craven's camera work, because of, you know, Barrymore's acting and Roger Jackson's uh, voice acting, because of those little subtle things, they have already established that the phone, the phone ringing is a threat, which is something not a lot of filmmakers, I, I think, could pull off. Uh, so great job by Craven. We're going to Fast forward a little bit here because, like I said, this is long. And uh, look at this right here. I want to play this. We get some foreshadowing here 
we get the tree and the swing moving. Now, is the swing moving because Stumacher was sitting on it? I know some people have speculated that. Uh, I, I don't really speculate that far. Um, I like to think of it more like a symbol, symbolic nature. You know, that is what she is going to be hung on brutally at the end of this scene here. So I, I, I just love the subtle symbolism there, foreshadowing, if you will. Love that. Once again, it's almost like a flirtatious conversation here. Uh, I don't think so. Popcorn. But he's, he's kind of putting her at ease. Oh, there's the line. Do you like scary movies? You know, it became synonymous with the Scream franchise. Um, and, and right away here, you know, you get this playful banter, and she's going to go on about uh, different horror movies, specifically Halloween. Um, and, and we hadn't seen that before. So right off the bat, they are playing right into showing us that, you know, in this movie, characters are um, characters know about horror movies, which is really unique at the time. So we're going to skip forward ahead a little bit. Um, and... Get to some more sinister stuff. Okay, let's keep going a little bit here. Look at right now. He basically just said, "I want to know who I'm looking at," um, and and that sets up right right away there. Boom! This is this this guy's for real. You know, she knows it. Um, he's either fucking with her or not, but she is on edge, and we as an audience, you know, who had probably been on edge because we kind of started to realize what was going on. You know, now she's in the same shoes as we are, where, you know, something's going to happen. Look at that. Look at that right there. Setting up some atmosphere, you know, the mist or smoke or whatever going over the pool. Man, they must be loaded, by the way. Um, but, but really, really like that. Here we go. She's off the phone. And the phone rings again. Right away, she stops. Like, she's scared now. She is scared. She's walking around the house, giving us some real uh, spatial awareness of how big this house is. And she's all alone. Listen, asshole! Here we go. Boom, it just got fucking intense. Really fucking intense. And that was a slower build than pe most people realize. You know, most people, you think a scream's opening, and you think, oh man, he just, fu they, right off the bat, they just fucking kill Casey Becker, kill Drew Barrymore. And that is true, but they slowly ramp up the tension, um, and it's just so good. So we're going to skip forward a little bit more. She's getting a little more nervous. Uh, obviously, um, we've got some screams going on here, no pun intended. Uh, Let's go forward. And, and uh, let's stop right here. Let's play this. Sorry, like I said, I just wanted to fast forward through it so we're not, you know, watching the whole thing. But I want to pause, uh, pause and play at certain points here. Let's continue. Stay with me. Stay and right there, look at them. The music is impor important there, too. And we find out they got her boyfriend. Um, well, we didn't know it was the day at the time, but we they got her boyfriend. Um, in the back and, and this is great and they're playing a game and look at like like we're feeling like that too like you know we're, we're kind of crouching down in our seats a little bit the first time we see this because we don't know what the fuck is going to happen uh really good shit there i'm going to go forward a little more okay let's continue right here so he's playing a game i love that Please leave me alone. Like, she's fucking terrified. Uh, yeah, she should be. They got her boyfriend uh, uh, tied up in back. Uh, she's all alone. 
and here, here we go. Here's where shit just shit starts getting real. Once again, just such a slow, tension-filled build-up, just like Halloween, but in a different way. Love this right here. We're about to get our first look. Right there. Hold on, we're gonna get our first look at Ghostface right here. As her parents are pulling up, it gives us some hope. And that 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 parents um, parents pulling up is important here too, especially knowing what we know now. Um, you know, we know we obviously know Drew Barrymore does not survive this, right? But at the time, you know, we're under the impression she is going to survive. She is going to get out of this because she's Drew Barrymore. She's on the poster, right? Biggest one on the poster. Boom! Our first our first look at Ghostface right there. So. And then we just get this long knock at Dragon Ball Battle. Look at the, look at the brutality here. Ooh, you can feel that. She's still got the phone in her hand. You can feel that, and just like the pain. This is fucking brutal. We're gonna keep going here. Look at, she's trying to get to her parents here. Let's, but she can't talk. You just choked her ass out. They're coming home like a normal night, and now until Look at, oh, that's so good. She's trying to re scream out to her mom, and, and she can't. That is heartbreaking to watch. That is in some intense shit right there. And then it continues. She takes his mask off. She obviously sees the killer's identity. We do not. And then we just get the culmination here where they can hear her on the line as Ghostface is dragging her. That's heartbreaking for a parent, too. And then obviously it ends with, hold on one second, ends with their see them seeing her hanging from the tree, just like fucking gutted. Look at that, look at that image. Uh, that That is fantastic. So, like I said, I'm sorry for fast forwarding through all that, but both of these movies have such great openings, like, it's hard to choose, guys. I told you I was going to choose. For me, uh, like I said, tell me down in the comments um, which opening you think is more effective or which one you like better. Uh, for me, you guys know I'm a Halloween guy, okay? And look at behind me, all kinds of Michael Myers shit. Um, I could talk about Hall Halloween all day long. Uh, but for me, I think the Scream opening is more effective. And I think Scream, uh, I don't want to say it peaked there, but I think Scream... Um, was never more chilling than it was during that opening scene. Whereas Halloween got more chilling as the movie progressed, right? Um, but if we're just talking about the opening scenes in a vacuum, I am giving the edge to Scream 1996. Uh, two very, very different openings that um, you know fit their respective franchises, uh, but Scream really just walloped you in the head, whereas Halloween just kind of made you feel uneasy. Uh, throughout that whole opening and, and both are perfect for their movies but if you ask me which opening is better which is more effective I'm going to go with Scream so let me know down in the comments which of these openings you guys enjoy more or you think is more effective I will talk to you guys later